Okay, thank you very much. So we will uh, go on with uh, Deccan Volcanism. And what I want to show you uh, this afternoon is uh, probably Deccan Volcanism is probably the main trigger of uh, the KT mass extinction. So uh, if uh, we just, uh, if it works, why is this? Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> so. Well, uh, here you have a series of persons who participated to this work. Some of them are not in the pictures, but uh, such work would no, not be possible without the help of all these people. So, uh, this afternoon we have seen a lot about uh, the five mice extensions. And I just uh, to remind you that the KT boundary one is probably the only one where you have the coincidence between impacts and the huge volcanic activity. You can also see on uh, the right part of this slide that uh, all these uh, five mass extinctions correspond to huge sea level fluctuations. And um, you have mainly black shield deposition, anoxic condition for all of them, with the exception of the Kitty boundary. And I think that it's probably due to the fact that uh, uh, since uh, the end of the Cretaceous, you have a huge uh, reorganization of uh, the ocean, and the circulation was probably too uh, vigorous in order to and prevent black shell deposition during this time. So we know uh, that we have an iridium anomaly in the red clay layers, uh, coinciding with an impact at the Kitty boundary. But we also know that uh, we have uh, still some problems uh, in terms of the dating of Chicks Club, which for us predate the Katy boundary. And uh, we don't have really uh, a good correlation between uh, large impact and mass extinction event to now. And, but uh, reversely, we have a nice correlation between mass extinction and volcanism. And you can see here that all the five mass extinction correspond uh, to uh, huge volcanic activity, and uh, we talk about uh, Deccan traps by now. Well, uh, we know that uh, volcanic activity, and mainly Deccan traps here in the case, uh, is uh, responsible for huge emission of CO2, and especially also uh, sulfur dioxide, which means lead to ocean acidification, carbonate crisis, and uh, pr some extinction, plankton foraminifera, for example. And we have also probably a huge climatic change, warm, but also warm events interrupted by some cold, cold ones. And this is mainly due to the accumulation of a huge mega flow links to the country of activity, as we will see. It leads also to greenhouse condition overall and the novel inst uh, weathering processes, which may lead to coolings, but also to increase in nutrients. And finally, we, this can help to final recovery or delay the recovery. It depends a little bit. Okay, so, but most of this mass extinction appear to be linked with ocean acidification. Now, what I want to do uh, for the last uh, part of my talks is to show you uh, first was some global benchmark of the connectivity outside India, and after I will just take you in India and to show you what are huh, the benchmark of the connectivity in India. So we have, as Goethe said, the huge climatic fluctuation, and uh, we have first a significant cooling at the early late menstruation interval, which probably may explain some sort of decrease in uh, organism diversity. And afterwards, in the latest maestration, we have a significant and abrupt warming, which is clearly linked to the kind of activity, as you will see later. And this coincides with decreased plantic from nephora diversity and some nil extinction of inosomates and redist, for example. And uh, nanoplankton also recorded very nicely such events. You can see here that we have uh, some organisms suggesting warming, which reflect maximum warming uh, in the latest uh, zone of the Cretaceous, uh, followed by uh, increasing in cool water taxa, which reflect rapid cooling, again, at the very close to the KT boundary. And moreover, we can correlate this marine record with a continent, uh, continental climate record from North USA, for example, this is a very nice paper of uh, Will Fettel, 
uh, using terrestrial plant and leaf margin analysis. And here we have a perfect link between well, deck and volcanism, terrestrial environment, and marine environments. All of them recorded this warm event. We have also a lot of geochemical, geochemical proxy which we can use uh, globally. And uh, for example, here I just want to show you as a stable, uh, sorry, the osmium isotopes record. This is a paper for Robinson et al. And here you can see that uh, we, you have some uh, more negative values marking the onset of Deccan activity, but mainly close to KT boundary, that's to say uh, 200,000, uh, 300,000 before the Kitty boundary, you have really more and more negative values, which may correspond to the Deccan megapulse, as I will show you later, and partly also to the Chicks Group impact uh, predating the Kitty boundary by itself, which is again marked by the most negative values of this osmium record, links to the meteorite, meteorite impact. Okay. Marine strontium isotopes also is quite interesting. Increase of uh, these values reflect enhanced continental weathering due to greenhouse effect, probably accelerated by acid rain well before the Kitty boundary. And you can see here that the weathering of Deccan basalt by itself may explain this cooling due to CO2 consumption during the alteration of silicates, for example. Mineralogical proxy are also quite nice benchmarks of the connectivity. You can see here in two records, uh, on the right, Tunisia, on the left, this is 525A South Atlantic sites. Both of them saw a huge increase in kaolinite, uh, indicating, suggesting humid climatic condition linked to Hans Greenhouse condition, probably linked to the connectivity again. So, and uh, I have also to point out that uh, close, close the Kitty Band, we have um, a general a decrease in carbonate deposition, probably due to uh, acidification of the ocean. Another very nice Deccan benchmark that, uh, for example, one of our collaborators found, Font et al. paper, for example, found uh, the presence of the agakenite mineral, which is a chlorine-rich iron mineral, in some section, like in Bidar, very far away from Deccan, and also in Gubbio. And this uh, clearly uh, indicates acidification of the atmosphere as a coincidence of the coincidence of the Deccan main eruptive phases again. So now we go a little bit uh, closer from India, and Gerta already showed you uh, the Meghalaya section, which is located some, let's say, 1,000 kilometers away from the European center of the Deccan traps. This section clearly is uh, show a very clear, nice KT boundary, a huge iridium anomaly uh, drop in Delta C14. But below that, you can see that we have the dominance of this disaster opportunistic from Nifra, Gumbletria, Cretacea, and a lot of uh, dissolution level, indicative probably of acidification close to the KT boundary again. Now, if we go into the eruption center and uh, in uh, the Deccan volcanic province, which is really a huge, huge province, volcanic province, as large as a French country, but has been much more extended. And uh, every people know that it's uh, linked to the migration uh, of Asia towards Asia. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, recent paleomagnetic data, this is the works of Chene et al., which indicate that this event was very brief, only covering only two reversals. The age is close of 65 uh, million years, 66 if you are using the new uh, time scale, very close to the Kitty boundary. And in fact, you have three pulses, one small pulses, which initiates the decay trap volcanism uh, uh, some few millions years ago, so clearly Chicxulub group cannot initiate the can trap activity, and especially a mega pulse in Crown 29 R, which corresponds to more than 80 percent of the total uh, Deccan emission. The thickness is really huge, more than uh, 3,500 meters, and this is very close to Kitty boundary. Uh, let's say, uh, amongst uh, 200,000, 300,000 euros before the Kitty boundary. 
and probably hands close or after the Bukhati boundary, as you will see. And we have a medium pulse again at the after the Bukhati boundary, some uh, 200, 300 thousand years after the Bukhati boundary, which may explain the delay in the recovery. So. They can volcanism as cause for the mass extinction, for sure. But uh, the dating is still a little bit more prob problematic. We have a huge error margin about absolute radiometric data till now. And still now, the biostratigraphy, at least close to India, was not so clear. So what we are doing now, it's uh, using a multi-proxy -approx approach to evaluate more or less the age of Deccan volcanism and its influence on the KT extinction. How to do that? It's very simple. Just follow the lava flow, and when the, and the lava flow, some of them, the huge ones, are ending their life into the Bengal Sea, and they are intercalated with nice sediments with foraminifrone. So it's what we did, and we went first in Rajamundri. Rajamundri is, uh, consists of a huge intra-canyon flow linked to the Deccan volcanic province, and interestingly, you have probably the presence of uh, the lower trap correspond to the phase two, and the upper one correspond to the phase three in the early tertiary. In between, you have some sediments of shallow marine to estuarine condition. And here, we have been lucky to find some earliest Danian planktic from Nifra, uh, just above the phase two, the lower trap. And you have still uh, higher up some more planktic from Nefra and even nanofossils marking the earliest Danian uh, zones here. But the problem, if you try to uh, uh, have a more precise idea about the stratigraphy of this huge lava mega flow, this is one of the longest lava flow known in the world. It's quite difficult in Rajamundri because it's too distal. And uh, what uh, we have done is uh, to correlate Rajamundri, this proximal part, to some more distal site, uh, some OGC cores. And what you can see here, that this uh, lower and upper flow consists in a more distal part of several flow intercalated with hemipelagic and planktic from Nifra. And Gerta already talked about that, but here we have really the direct dating of the main phase of the Deccan traps. Okay, now what I want to do is to go closer for the, uh, to the emission center in central India. And first of all, I want to show you one section which was very well known because a lot of people were thinking that it corresponds to the Kitty boundary due to the presence of an iridium anomaly. But as you can see here, this iridium anomaly is quite low, uh, 0 0.4 ppb, almost nothing. And moreover, uh, it's quite problematic because you have uh, bones, dinosaur bones below and above this iridium anomaly. So it's very unlikely that you have the Kitty boundary here. And moreover, uh, you have a huge palladium anomaly which is uh, indicating more uh, basaltic origin for this uh, PG anomaly than uh, something else. So it's not clearly coinciding with the Kitty boundary. So what we are doing now also is we are conducting a um, multi-proxy approach of any kind of sediments in central India, below the Deccan traps, into the Deccan traps and after in order really to reconstruct the paleoenvironmental and paleoclimatic change linked to Deccan volcanism. And for that purpose, I just want to show you one or two sections. And here, uh, this is the Jimli section. It's a very important section because uh, this is an inter uh, interval. Uh, which is mainly, uh, mainly down with uh, paleosols and lacustrine sediments, but we have the chance to have one centimeter thick of, uh, let's say, more marine condition, which include earliest formifera, earliest Danian formifera. That's uh, very important. By this way, we can reconstruct the stratigraphy of some intertrapean sediments in central India. And what can be shown here, using paleomagnetic data and pa some um, uh, palynoflora data, that uh, below the Deccan trap you have 
a lot of dinosaur, megaflora, and so palynomorph up to phase one, the first phase of the Deccan traps. But when you enter into phase two, you are losing all the dinosaur and the megaflora, and you get only fungal and biodegraded organic matter. And this is only after phase three that you have a full flora recovery. So it means that dinosaur and megaflora did not survive to the main phase two, uh, close to the Kitty boundary in central India. And uh, we apply also some geochemical multiproxy, for example, chemical at the index of alteration. And uh, here uh, on that section, we start uh, from the base to uh, the uh, infratrapeans, go through the trapeans up to the supratrapeans. And you can see here also very clearly that we have the highest chemical index alteration corresponding to uh, the phase two. And uh, this could ex be explained probably by a lot of acid rain during this time. And it's coeval with the sharp decline in pollen and an increase in fungal spore as observed by Sament and Moabin. So we have a different proxy showing that we have a high weathering accelerated by acidification in this kind of uh, continental sediments and culminating with phase two intertrapean sediments. Uh, for example, here, where you can compare some index like CIA or the lot of ignition showing that clearly you have a huge alteration here too. And uh, interestingly also, uh, some collaborators con conduct some uh, paleo, uh, let's say, uh, biomagnetic uh, paleomag uh, studies showing here that, uh, I, I have no time to go into details here, but you can see that the highest uh, CIA index, highest weathering index, correspond to a multiplication of the magnetic population, which is quite high during phase two. And this uh, means generally that you have a lot of iron oxide dissolution linked to acidity and therefore after the precipitation. And interestingly, we have find also uh, some uh, cyanobacterian algae, very well preserved, which are also indicative of very extreme environmental condition during this time in central India. So, uh, in order to finish this talk, we have some constraint on duration, on timing, that can trap flow fields inside closed eruption center, which are linked to volcanological constraint, okay, uh, 50 years, for example, for a uh, cooling unit. We have a lack of secular variation between the flow, which means that this was quite rapid, and some quiescence period. Uh, and these are the intertrapeant sediments, and especially in that place in central India, the formation of red ball, which are the alteration beds, interbeds between basalts, which can be long or fast. And here, I will finish here, just showing that if we take the upper part of phase two in central India, which consists just of an accumulation of mass flow, uh, of basalt flow separated by red balls, uh, covering probably the last 100,000 uh, years before the KT boundary, you can see that we have a lot of this red ball, a lot of them. And in order to get this kind of weathering uh, in a so short time, we really need uh, acid rain to explain that. And this is quite interesting, and work are going on. So uh, I think that uh, every people is thirsty. I let you with my, my uh, conclusion, and uh, thank you very much to be there this afternoon.